I know it's Mike. I hope it's Mike. Unless Mike changed his phone number. <laughs> I'm going for my desk around the other line, but please. Oh, wrong Mike. Anthony Sloan, then I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Okay. That was day. Right? It's like, it's like I, I guess it's radio training because, you know, I introduced you, but you just introduced me, Mike Sergeant. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> hey, we know all these things. Listen, man, I know you're super busy because you're super busy all the time. And, you know, I only try to, uh, I only call you when there's something that I, I need to talk to you about, you know? Uh, <laughs> And the the big thing now, of course, is um um uh, what's that guy and and the Black Messiah, you know the, the, the Black Messiah. Yeah. Okay, I like to say the coward and the Black Messiah, but uh, oh, that's not that's not the quizzling the quizzling and the, well we can call people a lot of names, but you know in fact, <laughs> in fact let's go on that because uh, I I've seen the film twice, um, oh. no in movie in a movie theater. <laughs> wow, where are you living now? Now, well, I uh, um, I'm in. Well, I'm down. I'm down in Chesapeake, and uh, oh, yeah. but what's interesting about the movie theaters now? If people don't. I'm not good. I, let me not say this, but especially in a movie like this was not really. I don't know what the box office is about it because of the COVID. But you know, say the movie theater holds 300 seats. I'm mean, just making up a number. Well, there might be at the most 15 people in that joint. High ceilings, social distance, more than social distance, whatever, 25 feet apart, mass. So you're cool, you know? So, um, yeah. but the reason I really want to see this particular film in the movie theater is because um, of uh, Craig Harris Jr., who, who's, who's part of the, the um, or who did the, the soundtrack, uh, did the music uh -huh. for the thing with Mark Isham. I guess, I guess now uh, Mark, Mark Isham is like his, uh, uh, Craig's entry into uh, yeah, a, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, uh, so I'm hopeful for him, but I wanted to hear the music at a, a you know, a, 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 a sound system like that, that's in a movie theater. That's the only uh -huh. thing. I saw it twice. First, I saw it just to see it. And then I took my uh, my niece and her man uh, last night. Uh, to see it, you know, I want to. I want to talk to them uh, later on. Well, she, she's going to pull this. I, I, I don't. I can't talk about it. But I'll, I'll talk to her, her man. You know, to get a to get a millennium uh, perspective. You understand what I'm saying? Um, no, I do. I, I'm actually fascinated that that why she didn't want to talk about it. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I should ask her that question and just relate it. You know, but I, I don't want to squeal on her or anything like that. Uh, the other thing is that, but, but I'm doing several things on it. I haven't actually done a review on it myself i don't really feel like that but i also i want to talk to you about certain things about the industry itself uh, i'm going to talk um uh to basir and chow about not necessarily the film but the uh whole atmosphere of, of the black panther party for uh for self-defense that whole um uh, what's going on around that and uh and that's it so i wanted i want to be a complete thing with this um uh, but here's the um let me go back with you. Let's see, since we talked about, because uh, filmmaking is about relationships. That's what I cried. Well, like anything, you know, it's who you know, not blah, blah, blah. But it's like everything, business. You do things for friends. So with Mark helping Craig, for instance, what are the kinds, because it seems to me, even the casting, everything is about who knows who, who knows what, you know. Uh, um, I even hear that Daniel Kluwer didn't even have to audition because he had to end with Ryan Coogler. And then, you know, that whole, you know, and, and Ryan Coogler is hooked up with uh, Shaka King because they're all of their same kind of filmmaking class. I mean, how does this work? How how you seen this kind of thing work? Let me well, just I mean, it works like, I mean, in terms of this song in particular, I mean, this is how this business and, and probably most businesses work. I mean, you know, if you see an ad uh, in, in for a job, you know, but somebody knows somebody, they're going to be able to get the interview before you will. So same thing in the film industry, and that's why traditionally and for so long, people have kind of been left out. Mm -hmm. So it, yes, there's a certain amount of nepotism, but if, it's like anything else. You want to work with your friends, and then all of a sudden they said, hey, Anthony Sloan, we're going to give you $5 million to start a brand new people of color radio station. Who would you call? Mm. You definitely bring in new people, but you bring in people who you knew could deliver. So I yeah. say that to say we finally have 
of Black Hollywood. Shaka King in particular, uh, I know him, interestingly enough, and you'll appreciate this uh, uh, connection, is, as you know, in the 90s, I used to do sound design for theater. Exactly. And that's kind of how I came to be on WBAI and doing radio drama. Mm-hmm. And I used to do sound design for the plays of Judy Shepard King, his mother. Mm-hmm. So I knew him when he was a kid. And I remember when he was making short films that were getting acclaim and whatnot. So, you know, he, he's paid his dues, you know, and he's definitely a filmmaker that his parents were very, very, let's just say radically thinking. They were vegetarians and they were people who espousing a lot of the things that you that you know that the Black Panther Party was about in terms of community to him as a kid so he was he grew up in all of this mm-hmm. so uh, I, I interviewed Ryan Coogler and you know Ryan Coogler got his start you know by connection and, and, and the friendship he developed with Forrest Whitaker That's for right. his first film when he made uh, Fruitful um, Station Fruitful yeah, Station that's what Fruit, uh, fruit, fruit Station and out uh, there in the uh, Bay Area. Fruitville Station, Fruitville Station, exactly. So at Fruitville Station, he worked with uh, Michael B. Jordan. So when he did Black Panther, of course, you know, and Daniel Kaluuya was in Black. So yeah, it, it, this, this is how it should work. It should work that people make people, I mean, let's say De Niro is a great actor, but his relationship with uh, Scorsese is really, you know, cemented his career mm-hmm, mm-hmm. exactly yeah yeah I, w- I would be sort of weirdly remiss i have to say this because this whole thing there's this other faction a political faction uh that deals with uh, what we call ados uh, and and saying that you know people who are, who have to have actually should have uh, a connection to um uh, to being black American and just people of color we don't deal with that stuff or anything like that but uh, uh, but but a black American uh I say experience is going to be different than someone that has other kinds of experience. Uh, the question that was asked one time of somebody, I mean, so I think the question was, was, oh yeah, Samuel Jackson said, well, yeah, that's good that Danny, Danny Kluwer got the, got the job for Get Out. But uh, I wonder what would be if he had someone who was black American instead of, you know, uh, 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 you know, whatever people of color, whatever you're calling it these days. It was just a question. You know, people were freaked out over whatever have you. You know, go, okay. Um, now, we understand actors are actors and all this, this stuff. But but answer, address that question. Do you think there would, there would be some... Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think, again, uh, I understand the question and I understand where it's coming from. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, okay, uh, how many uh, films have we seen? You know, you know Hugh Jackman... Uh, is Australian, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He doesn't play Australians, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicole Kidman, you know, she's not playing Australian characters, you know? Uh, uh, Charlize Theron, she, she's not known for playing South African characters. So, you know, a, a lot of British actors lose their accent and become here. Like, mm-hmm. there are black British actors who do it as well. You know, she would tell a GF4. He was in 12 Years a Slave. Mm-hmm. Clearly, that's not specifically his heritage. But the other side of that is, I, I feel there's really not a lot of uh, value in dividing us further. You know, black people are diaspora. We're not a monolith. We do come from all different cultures. And we have to embrace each other and support each other. Because Daniel Kalina is going to work with other actors. And if his career rises, he's going to be in a position where he can bring in American actors or, or African actors. Mm-hmm. Or actors from wherever, so we cannot look at ourselves monolithically, you know. In my opinion, mm-hmm. so I mean, sure, it's a valid question, you know. It's a valid question. How many times have we seen, you know, non-Americans play Americans and play American icons? There's countless examples, mm-hmm. but I, I think what it really comes down to is, uh, more importantly, I think is, you know, can he do the role? Yeah. What you know, first- because the other side of it, the other part of it is it is show business. Mm. Okay. It is uh it's not show art. Mm. So, you know, you have to have names in a production that will get you the financing to make the film. Exactly. That's the bottom line. That's what the people who have the money are gonna say. Mm. What's the last film he made? How much box office? Dan and Kalua did the the most successful horror film of all time. Yeah. His name is going to get that film greenlit. Mm-hmm. Now, is there an American actor who could have been just as good? Absolutely. But if he's a no name, he's not going to get the 
he's not going to get that opportunity. Well, there, there's, there, there's, a, I don't want, I don't get off on this, but that's, that's the whole point. Because Danny Clue got his start from, from, uh, they say some say hustling, you know, Jordan Peele, you know, really uh, in, intensely uh, lobbying him. Let me put it that way. Uh, but, but, but the thing is, um, if, if, if. Remember, he's an unknown. If if Jordan Peele, who is, as you would say, a person yeah. of color, you know what I mean, hires, yeah. you know, hires a, a so, so, you know, in other words, if if if, if Jordan Peele got a, a say, for instance, let me who let me say who played. Oh yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me jump. To, I'm coming right back to this. Um, uh, sh- uh, Trial of Chicago Seven. The brother that played uh, Fred Hampton in that, he was real good. But yeah, I just interviewed him on my podcast two weeks ago. Yes, he, oh. he's very good. He's oh. a really good actor. He's getting a lot of play now. Yeah. And, you know, he, he, he is going to eventually be enough of a box office star as well. But he hasn't had that breakout role. Exactly. He's going to get out with his breakout. That, 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 he's that, been that, acting with business for a minute. That, yeah, I understand. I'm not arguing. I'm not. I'm not arguing at all. I'm not saying that. All I'm trying to say, if Jordan Peele had picked, say, that guy, I'm not saying he. Not, not um, you know, to begin, then he would have ascended to that. So whoever you pick and who's doing the right. picking is what, what right. the relationships are about. I understand. Now I don't want to stay on that. I just wanted. To, I had to bring well, no, that. No, you're right. You're right. They're, they're, the king, Hollywood is, is, you know, being a kingmaker is part of it. It's the same thing in politics. Yeah, yeah, uh, but there's. Let, let me. I want to stay on the film a little bit. There's certain. I'm. I'm. I want to be nitpicking because uh, this is not. I guess this is almost like the. I want to say the producer, maybe the directors, kind of, kind of look. I'll give you. I'll give you like nitpicking things. For instance, uh, when um, when the chairman visits uh, um, um, the 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 mother of the of the, of the young man that 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 shot up the police because they they killed his his boy. You know what I mean? It, it in the setting they had you know. Cookies, you know, chocolate chip cookies. But clearly, back then, if I was on set, I shouldn't say it because if I had some influence, I said, "No, you can't put those cookies there. We didn't have those kind of cookies. Famous Amos wasn't even out then. You know what I mean? You have to have chips ahoy. <laughs> you, think, you understand? It's weird little things. Not, not, not you. Not, not any. Nobody's gonna make a difference with that. But I say those kind of little things is kind of interesting to me. Even, even say Fred, Fred Hampton's hat. You know what I mean? When they first started the film, that hat he first had that was a Fred Hampton hat. But you know Fred Hampton as that that unique hat that he always wore, and not that uh, not the Black Panther cap, which was worn worn. Uh, nobody wore it like that that I know of. Again, we all wore those those tams like that. You understand those little things? And what did, what would that do? You know, you know what is that important? Let me put it that way to the film or anything like that. Well, that, that's what you call production design, and, yes, and that's yes. up to the production designer to do, uh, to, to you know, to do the research. But at the same time, there's always stylistic decisions. It's it's like you're retelling history, but you know you're going to stylize it. You know, you you know they're they're you know in Django uh, uh, with Jimmy Fox, the sunglasses he wore that are so iconic. <laughs> yeah, Those yeah. weren't going to be invented for like another hundred years. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but from a stylistic choice. He looks cool with sunglasses, so even though they wouldn't have existed back then, they'll put them in it. Yeah. So I think, yeah, if you, if now anybody from the, you know, if anybody searches you, they'll go, hey! But, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, they might not. <laughs> you notice, because you know, unless you were making, you know, you know, unless they were home baked cookies, mm. uh, they probably wouldn't have looked like that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I just, I just had the weird kind of thing. But let me, t- let me give you something. No, 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 I do think that should be the name of your new show: nitpicking with Anthony <laughs> Sloan. <laughs> 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 uh, but there are a lot, lot of little touches that I like. Like, for instance, when we first see, I, I forget that whole spoiler thing. But when we first see, um, you know, the Judas character of uh, Bill O'Neill, you know, he's going to the thing. The way they shot it, because he had white socks on, because we did wear white socks, it looked like spats to me. This had nothing to do with anybody else. I'm going like, hey, and because of the coat and the hat, I'm going like, that was weird connection with with the let's say the 40s, the 50s, when they did wear spats. To then has nothing to do with anything, but that's part of my like, oh, I, I I I see that, you know, that kind of thing, you know. Well, you see that there again. Now that's costume designer. So you you're an artist, so you're picking up on all these, let's just say, artistic choices. Yeah, that's true. That that may or may not you know work or just. Sometimes they stand out to you. Nobody else would notice. If you probably, if you spoke to a production designer, he'd be like, oh, he'd probably have a reason. <laughs> and he'd no, no. Be, well, I'm glad you noticed that. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, I, I liked it. It had nothing to do. Nobody would I make that connection where I just made. Nobody. Nobody, you know, not even Mike Sargent. So, so that's all right. Let, let me ask you something. Let, let me stop right now and just go and, and, and find out 
Well, what you thought of the film? Just give me your overall uh, feeling and, and and thoughts on the film. Uh, well, I thought it was actually a pretty great film. I thought it was a film. I mean, you know, uh, in interviews, he's been uh, he, he he's been quoted to say that he his his vision for the because they were competing films. There have been a couple other Fred Hampton films. If you look at the screenwriting credits. You know, mm-hmm. one team of people was trying to do it, and they had it, and it didn't happen. Uh, and there were a lot of interesting actors that were originally attached, but. He saw it as, as a, a version of The Departed, and the whole idea of, like you said, a, a Judas or a Quisling or a Moru or a traitor in the midst of something. But I liked uh, I, I liked this movie a lot. I liked how he represented the power and, and the swag of the Black Panthers. You know, there's one thing about Black culture, I think, that no matter what, you know, you can look at various points in history. In my opinion, black people always still had the cool style, you know? It may have been co-opted, you know? The language, you know, man, there's so many things about black culture that have been co-opted and essentially been cool, but the, the idea of these men who were doing what they were doing at that time, and specifically, um, you know, what Fred Hampton, most people don't really know about him, and the idea that he was only 21. If this man had lived, he would have changed this country as, as much as, or maybe even more, than a Martin Luther King more. or a Malcolm X. In my opinion, what I liked about the movie, besides it having a lot of style, and it, it really, without hitting you over the head, made you realize the potential. And I'll even say, what I love about this movie, uh, along with the filmmaking and the acting and the, the story it's telling, is the fact that, you know, we, you know, most people, most young black people today don't even know who he is. Most white, young black people today don't even know who he is. And, and so much of our history has been erased that if you look at the top 10 films that the AFI chose, you know, the best films of 2020, you know, six of them are really stories of people of color. And the fact that our stories are now being told, Mm -hmm. uh, I believe more than anything, more than any legislation, okay, I think will change uh, the future. I I feel, you know, people are more, you know, it's, I think Obama's election and then the ability to become president had more to do with, you know, a president on 24 and, and the, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air uh, and, and people accepting the fact that we're here and we're not going anywhere and that we could be something other than what we were originally perceived. So hmm. I feel what it represents, what it says, and the way it said it, I think it's definitely one of the best films of the year. That's my uh, review. Uh, love. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I was concerned about in the casting is that I knew that after the movie was made, there would be some press junkets and stuff like that. I did not anticipate that they was going to have uh, uh, Fred Hampton Jr. Uh, so prominent in these interviews, which is a bonus, a huge bonus. And of, and of course, um, this whole thing about the, just really the era. So there's a lot of people from that era that we could, that, that, uh, that now get their stories out there and perhaps somebody will pick it up, you see? Uh, one of the things I did see on YouTube is uh, this whole thing on Mark Clark? The people, you know, uh, some years after they, they, these separate interviews, these little interviews they put together a, a little Mark Clark documentary, and I'm I'm looking at them and say, I would never have seen this if this movie didn't come out. That kind of thing, people would never even know. I mean, right now everybody's sort of been love. Oh yeah. The, Trump, uh, the FBI will get rid of Trump or the FBI, they're trying to make friends with the FBI. They don't know who the FBI is. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> this reminds people of, of, the, of the character of the FBI. But anyway. Yeah, and the lengths that this country will go to preserving the current order of things. Mm-hmm. You know, the lengths that those highest in government with more resources than anybody will go to maintain their dominance. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's important. I mean, you know, that's not the only movie to do it. You know, there's another movie out right now called The Martinian, you know, that you should probably see as well. Okay. But similar, it's, you know, these films, not only the black history, but they're an indictment of our government. Mm-hmm. 
Well, let me ask you, uh, one of the things I did appreciate about the film, and I'm trying to uh, rectify it in my head bef before I actually uh, talk to Craig about this, is certain, is the weave and, and the rhythm of the film. Like We're weaving, uh, let's say, the love story of, 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 Fred, uh, uh, of Fred Hampton and, and, and his woman, right? We have, you know, of course, we have the whole thing about the uh, Black Panther Party for self-defense doing what they do. Then you have the, of course, you have the the, the authority, uh, FBI, whatever, that we, the way they, we, they, they wave, we, weaved it together, I really enjoyed, I mean, I, I liked that. I appreciated that. You know, it made the film not boring, you know? Oh, absolutely. That's what I meant by it, it had a lot of style. It, mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is aware that the audience seeing it would not there. Mm. And it has to show you, like, why were they so compelling, mm. you know, and who were these people that humanize these characters. And like you said about the Black Panthers, a lot of people to see them, all they remember the Black Panthers being is a militant organization. Mm -hmm. And that's how they looked, because they were tough, they were cool, they wore sunglasses and berets, but, and, they, and they had guns, but the reality is... They didn't want to have to have guns. They had guns because they had no choice. They were militant because that was the only way to stand up to what was going on. Because if they didn't, we'd still be where we were. And as you can see, at least a third of the country would like us to be back there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, bygone days, they call it. <laughs> Let's put it that yeah, way. Well, back when America was great. Yeah, but let me ask you, let, let, uh, this is kind of interesting. One, one of the things... Uh, I look at is the word I came up with is cowardice. Okay, there every, to me, you know, there, there's this. Let me put it this way: if you look at the film, people come away, yeah, oh, they'll come like that. But truly, how many of us would actually stand up? I, I would even say maybe uh, at any given time, maybe five percent of the popular of any kind of movement are, are really are there are it but uh, clearly uh, uh, maybe another 65 percent in that same movement any place else are based, i want to say this i have to say this but we're cowards yeah we're not going to put ourselves out there a good thing you know when, when, when the guy was talking to the guy that they cleaned the the, the jails the hospital uh, the guy says you're not going to jeopardize my job i'm not good you know blah, blah blah that kind of thing so the, uh, part of this whole thing about push for liberation where they have it is that possible? My question to you, and it's a larger question, and I guess I, I look at all your films and everything like that. Um, are we a nation, are most people nations of, of, of people of, of cowardice? I mean, how can we stand up, you know? Well, I think, I think that, 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 I think that's a very good question. I think that, that, I know it's, I'm, know, I'm, I'm, Mike, I'm saying, I know it's a strong word, but I just want to, you know, just put that out no, there. No, no, no. And I understand what you're saying. And, and a cowardice, it, it is a strong word, but, but here's the thing. I mean, uh, you know, we have not, you know, really until last year, okay, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a unified nation, uh, in many ways, not only dealt with, you know, this, but, you know, to, 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 you know, at what point do you, uh, do something that's not comfortable? At what point do you take a risk? At what point are you affected to the point where you will put your life on the line? You know, there are people who put their lives on the line during these protests that didn't realize they were putting their lives on the line, but at the same time, you know, even, even you, you, people can make fun of it, you know, the, the moms who would band together to protect the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. you know, but that is a, a, a sort of bravery, uh, uh, in, in my opinion. And so I think most people have not had to make a, a what would be a life or death choice, you know, mm -hmm. you know, will you try and escape from slavery? Uh, uh, and risk being killed, or will you just stay and serve it to the rest of your life? Yeah, you, you're talking you know, about how many people have had to face that choice in this country? I mean, sure, you, you know, you could say, you know, slavery is a, I mean, slavery, you could say that college is a debt slavery scheme, and so are many other things, but, you know, that's still, it doesn't seem like life and death until uh, it really is. So at that point, I, I think, you know, people have not had to be brave. People have not had to, you know, it's, it's, and, and coming back to what you were saying and, and why I think the importance of this film is, I think, it, you know, if you never have to make that choice and you never even have to think about it, mm -hmm. okay, in this case, you see these movies.
movies, you have to think about what would you do? You know, what would you do? Like, you know, and how do you feel about these people who would do it? You know, and, and to be uh, aware of this history, to be aware of people who make these sacrifices might make you not take certain freedoms and liberties for granted, as a lot of people do, especially young people of color. Now, that being said, I do think, you know, there are a lot of brave young people out there today. I, I The only optimistic thing I have about this country is just the fact that young people are a lot more aware of politics and how things are going and getting involved in government than they were, you know, when I was growing up and when you were growing up. So, you know, I think cowardice is something that goes hand in hand with, with apathy. It's like, you know, you, 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 we have the privilege of not having to, you know, have a life or death situation, you know, just like, like white privilege means you don't have to, you don't have, you don't have to really acknowledge racism. Same thing, you know, we, we have all these things that, you know, maybe now they're considered rights, but them to become uh, rights and, you know, having not have to fight like that, mm. uh, sure, you know, it, there's, how, how do you gauge that? How, how do you, you know, you really don't know until you're faced with it whether you're a coward or not. That's my well, this, I, man, yeah. now we spiral. I, I actually wanted to keep this on a cinematic thing, but we spiral off someplace else. But let me, let me <laughs> the, no, no, because it's kind of interesting. You talk to generations. I didn't know about the mothers protecting the uh, the, the Black Lives Matter people, right? I, for instance, yeah. in South Africa, they had this when when they had the whole fees must fall, the roads must fall, the statues must fall, and it was yeah. in in in, uh, in, uh, in um, at Rhodes University, right? Um, what happened is the white students. So there was protesting, everybody was protesting, but the white students uh, uh, surrounded and protected the black students from the exactly. from the military to come. No, the military had to come through them, and they they wouldn't do it. And I'm just trying to say this is kind of interesting to me because here's the thing: the I think the authorities, if you want to put it that way, they always create a buffer class in the, in the film when they talk about the the oh yeah, but uh, you say well my my my. The, the, when they get the white, the white supremacist people, whatever, the, not the, you know, those guys. Uh, they, the guy would say, well, my, my parents, I, I never enslaved anybody. And then the guy says, overseer. <laughs> but, that, but that's a buffer class. You know what I mean? Overseer is a buffer thing. And then we've had this whole buffer thing from at, at least, at least since after World War II, when we, when we started to have people going to college and we have these, uh, in other words, our middle class, Name, name it you and me if you want. We are the buffer class between between the downtrodden and everybody and, and everybody above. So now we have to figure out, okay, what am, what can I do since that since I'm since I am the buffer class, either I'm gonna be the buffer class to protect the powers that be, or be the buffer class to somehow the uh, surreptitiously, however it is, uh, support the downtrodden. I think that's the question that comes to my mind when I look at this. That's what I come out with the mo movie with this. But I mean, well comment on what I just said. I don't know why I'm asking you to comment on that. I can comment on that to say that, you know, you know, are they even aware or are we even aware that we're the buffer class? You know, you know, the, to be middle class to, to means that you can afford then to get a quote unquote public education and go quote unquote to college. Now, when you get there, what, what kind of education do you get? Like, how, how much did you learn about black history? You know, I, I was, I've been alive long enough to remember when they finally gave Black History Month to be Black History Month. You know, I was very young, but I remember when there was no Black History Month. Mm -hmm. So now we take it for granted this is Black History Month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but again, is that the only time you're going to learn about these people? And are they going to keep, you know, you're going to keep learning about the same, mm -hmm. you know, half a dozen, you know, black history figures that, that are kind of approved? You know, so once you are, do achieve something, you know, you still kind of have to drink the Kool-Aid because that's what they're serving. Yeah. Okay. Well, now let me get back to the film now. Uh, sorry, but I, yeah. I don't even know why. When I, why are you, why are you making me more political than I want to be with you? Okay. Look, my, Mike. Here's the thing. I want to go back. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe that's true. Uh, here's the thing. Now, things have changed. Normally, if this came out in regular theater, then we would have the whole box office. I guess. Uh, I guess Rotten Tomatoes. I don't look at Rotten Tomatoes, but I guess they still have the thing. But you know, you would have the box office returns. Because there is no box office, they stream. So how do they? How do how do people look 
uh, uh, judge films now? Uh, you, I'm asking you as an insider. How how what are, what are they really looking at to say this is a successful film? Well, or not? they're looking at streams and they're looking at um, you know who you know if it's on Netflix or Amazon or or Hulu, they can see how many people actually tune in. And you know the the real deal is you know you have to keep creating content so that your quote unquote subscribers mm-hmm. will stay with you. Mm. You know, and we'll and we'll want to. You know, you got more stuff coming next week, and and you know, you got to keep feeding the beast. Mm. Mm. So the interesting thing I think, though, about this time of of all this social change and and black stories is, you know, for a very very long time, the highest rated TV movie ever was Roots. Oops. Yeah. Okay. And then, yet, every black historical drama, Beloved, and Amistad, and, you know, all these black historical, even 12 years of they never make any money. They may get a claim, they may get awards, but they never make any money. Why? Why they never make any money is because, you know, you can watch a movie about the Holocaust or something going on in some other country, like, wow, that was back then, that was over there. But if you're a, a white person and you're watching a movie about slavery, like, okay, that was in this country and that was, you know, my ancestors. Mm-hmm. If you're a black person, you're like, yeah, that was mm-hmm. that person. So th- going to a theater and if you are going to be moved by what's going on, you're not going to love sitting around a bunch of white people if you're black or about mm-hmm. a bunch of black people if you're white because you, you have feelings about it because still, you might have just faced it going into the theater. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're home, and in the privacy of your home, with friends or family, you can watch this and process it in your own way. So more people will watch it because it's not in the theater or because they can see it at home. That's why Roots did so well, because people could, you could watch it, you could have conversation, you could have discussion, you could you, you could do things you could never do in, in a movie theater mm-hmm. because you, 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 you don't have to, you don't have to process it in public. Mm. Does that make any sense? Makes sense. It makes per, uh, 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 perfect sense. In fact, I was wondering too. Uh, I, I've known people. Uh, I've known. I've, I've heard that people have streamed, have watched it three and four times streaming. Yeah, of course. You know? that's right. And and you know you may want to, uh, but you know if you're moved, if you're crying, you may not want to sit in the computer and cry or, or yell at the screen or you know yell all right, you know whatever it is, whatever you're feeling <laughs> in that moment. Uh, you know, I'll never forget. Okay. Uh, going to see the movie Rosewood. I went to see a screening of Rosewood and it was a mixed audience. And there's a point where, you know, if you know the movie and you know it's about this massacre down in, in Florida and what these white people did and then at a certain point, you know, black people start fighting back. And every time they were killing the white person, you know, the audience was cheering. <laughs> okay? Because they are the bad guys in the movie. And you could see all the white people in the audience. The, the tension was palpable. Mm. You could see, like, it was an uncomfortable feeling. Mm. People were into the movie, but it, you have feelings about that. And it's not necessarily something you want to do in public. So yeah. it's something that, like, if you were had the process of it, if it was disturbing, again, white or black, or mixed or whatever, you could watch this again two or three times, mm. pick up on something you missed. Mm. You know, those are our viewing habits today. Mm. Something you couldn't do if you had to go to the theater every time. Because, like, who wants to, you know, go and watch a, a, a hero you, you enjoyed die over and over and pay money to see it? Which goes to a question, I guess, hey, okay, here we go. I got a question that you can ask people at any time. You, you could take this question. Don't even say it comes from me. Just take this question. Most times when you talk to an artist, they say, well, I've made this thing so the people can see it or whatever it is that I, I'm, I, the, the money would be good, but blah, 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 blah. And this, and now that we've changed ways of looking, is this better for artists because more people are going to be seeing their films? In fact, what happens with the internet, if, if people see it and then, and then people discuss it on the internet, like that, then it's definitely going to get more views and more points of view, whatever have you out there. Do you see that? No, yeah, obviously, this, listen, this is, this is uh, a, an ongoing conversation among critics and, and, you know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yes, of course, I think it is better. You know, we, you know, I've definitely asked almost exactly that question, you know, about the future because I have my views on where things are going and, you know, what's the future of, of movie theaters and streaming and all that? And that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, I do think it's better. Mm-hmm. I do. I want a hybrid, man. I'm telling you, like, we talked about this a, a, a while ago. You know, bring back the drive-ins. 
You put your they're freakies back. in your car. They are back. The, but no, I'm saying the drivers. What happens? You get caught with your friends. It doesn't matter if the white people with a white car, or whatever, whoever, some three lanes over. You're there, and y'all can have everything. I just love these ideas. What, what, what's happening? So, Mike, uh, look, man, I don't want to hold you up. I know. In fact, what do you do? What do, uh, I have to ask you, as usual. Why am I asking? You know, because you're going to give me a little five minute list of what's going on. What's going on in your life, man? Tell me. Ah, uh, just a couple things going on. I've got a, a script that I sold, uh, or a script I wrote, got optioned, and I'm. Gearing up for a film, I'm going to be directing, and right now I'm producing a film festival for Hampton University. Oh, really? Uh, the Hampton University Film Festival. When's when's it happening? Huh? When's it happening? It's virtual, of course. Yeah, yeah, but when is it happening? Uh, the thirtieth and thirty-first of March. Uh, I might just be leaving the country then, but you know, I'm I, I'm actually I'm down I'm, I'm, I'm down I'm down here. I I can go I can jump in the car and go right to Hampton University right now. Too bad it's not going to be real. Okay. Uh, <laughs> virtual is real. Virtual is real. <laughs> virtual is a new reality. Okay, I'm glad to know someone is making making some 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 moves, whatever have you. I guess I have to hit on you for, for to take me out to get a uh, some a uh, uh, glass of Shiraz wine and some fish or something like that. One of these like maybe in four years something like that when you make a whole bunch of my <laughs> yeah that's what I'm saying about <laughs> <laughs> okay well no. thanks so much for this like I said you know I always chime into you when I'm when I actually have something to, to talk about you know uh, do you have any any questions for me or anything like that I'm, I'm, uh, whatever uh, no, where are you going and how long have you gone oh no I'm you know yeah, I got stuck here because of the COVID you know so I'm, tr uh, I'm trying to get you know I live in South Africa I live in, actually live in a yeah. village in South Africa and so I'm trying to get back to be, but the thing is because I do have I'm trying to get this play uh, read or done at the at the uh, are you gonna are you gonna be at the uh, the uh, you know Winston Salem the uh, the National Black whatever uh, theater festival this year? Oh no, I'm not gonna be there. I, I, I mean, not theater. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, just involved with it or anything like that. No, I haven't been involved with it in years. I used to okay. like I said, I've been involved. I used to do sound design. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so as a matter of fact, I'll give you a piece of trivia. Hmm. I went down there with the first play I ever did sound design was a play called Ghost Stories. And it was written by Billy Graham, who is was the original, the first black artist to do Black Panther. He's the kind of the one who kind of helped make cement Black Panther as his own character. So mm -hmm. uh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Connections are all right, but anyway, but the reason why I went, well, I'm, I'm trying to get back to South Africa, and I've, uh, what, what's happened is because my specialty is audio drama, as you well know. Uh, but yeah. what happens is that um, they, the, the, some, I don't, I'm so, I'm retired. I don't do it. I don't hustle for anything. But some people, people who know my work. They really want me. So there's this whole uh, groups or groups, I should say, down in South Africa that they want me to do a pro some uh, a project for them. And it's going to take about three months. So so let's see, let's see what happens with that. I'll I'll keep people aware of that and see what happens. All right. Okay. Well, look, man. Hey, stay safe. I'm so happy that the, that you're being more prosperous than 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 all of than any of us should. <laughs> well, you know, uh, let's put it this way: it's, this is the pendulum swinging the other way because mm. it was not a good time prior. So okay, I got you. I got you. All right, man. You be well. Be safe. All right. You too. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>